Big game for at least the next week's worth of conversation between the Jets and Bills and the AFC East. It may loom even larger as this thing goes forward here. I'm starting to think this might be a Division One with just nine or ten wins. You see it every year. I think the AFC East may end up being one of those teams. As you know, the Jets fired their coach, and the Bills coach is still under fire. I think that favors the Jets. Guys tend to play harder for a new head coach. Meantime, McDermott throwing the franchise back into the game or allowing it to happen than his... Um, I don't know what the hell happened to him in the in the final minute of that game, letting the Texans have the ball back and win that one in in regulation time. Either way, Bills at the Jets. Uh, the Jets are a home dog plus two and a half at the time of this recording with their new offensive coordinator, what that spells for Nathaniel Hackett and his best pal Aaron Rodgers. I have no idea. Total on this one is 41. Neither of these teams is a top to bottom juggernaut, but I'm going with McDermott outsmarting whoever the offensive coordinator is for the Jets today and finding ways to heat up the Jets 40 year old quarterback bills 24 to 20 Josh Allen rushes over. I mean, James cook ain't going to be out there. So, uh, so Allen 40 plus rush uh, yards pays out plus plus one thirty. same price plus plus one thirty for a Josh Allen touchdown. That's what these bills are. They are Josh Allen. Josh Allen is the bills. If they are to succeed, it has to be on 17 shoulders. Hank, how say you? Well, first of all, I always think it's hilarious when these, these megalomaniacs like LeBron James or Aaron Rodgers, who insist on micromanaging every single aspect of the organization. Like you have to draft my son. You have to get Alan Lazard. You have to, you have to uh, hire my, uh, my 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 dear dear longtime companion to be the offensive coordinator. You you know it's like every single thing is goes through these narcissistic maniacs, and then it's like, whoa! I don't like people thinking I had anything to do with the coach. Game. That's that's uh, the oh part that God. makes me. And lonely. of course, that's no, the part that it's like, what are you what are you coming at me for? Whoa! I am a because you man. because you asked because you asked for the attention. That's why. Yes. Yes, you 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 insist on personnel decisions. You insist on coaching decisions. You Woody Johnson admits he was having a phone call with you. Okay, let's ask you this, A Rod. Did you advocate for Bob, your dear friend, your close personal friend? Did you go? Did you say, I really want him to be the coach? Hey, Woody, I want him to be the coach. Like, obviously not. But like this idea that these guys who have to micromanage every aspect of roster creation and coaching, then they go, oh man, I would never cost someone his job. No way. Anyway, it's laughable. Caden said, well, I, I, well I, the head coach says this. What do you think about that, Aaron? Like, well, I think we should do it a different way. I think we need it. Like, but you're not involved in what the operation is going forward. You're allowed to, to, to contradict the head coach, but we're to buy that you have nothing to do with the whereabouts of that head coach today. Do you, do you always do you and do you and Woody Johnson always um have a phone call after the game? Is that just standard? You guys just just chatted up on the on the phone, uh, or was that or was that a little unique at, right before the coach got fired? Anyway, well, um, listen. The they, bottom line is this: to the matter at hand, this game. I don't think it's a killer, really. I know that we would like to say they gotta have it. One of these teams, but one of these teams is going to be in a rough spot six weeks through. As I say, though, the AFC East and gangbusters. I think you can rally if you look at the Bills and Jets upcoming games. There's a chance that you play yourself back into things and are fine in you know three four weeks from now. But that being said, two and four is two and four. Well, I think. Uh... The Jets get the dead cat bounce here. I think that, that there will be a uh, you know a little bit of a, a rallying uh, a, around the the new coach, um, and and mostly I just think the the Bills are in real trouble. Like I mean, nine for thirty for Josh Allen against the Texans. That only happens in a driving rain. Like nine for thirty does not happen mm -hmm. in perfect conditions. Like that that was. Alarm bells are going off. You know, we've been talking about his lack of weapons and, and they were kind of exposed. So two two very flawed teams. And I, I think the, the Jets, um, you know, it's, the irony is like, if Tua wasn't hurt, that would be the team to beat in this division. Like they, they would 
have an easier time moving the ball up and down the field than these other two teams. It's a but great, think- it is a great what if that is going to pick back up. I assume that Tua is going to be playing, you know, relatively soon. And if if I'm right about that, then I, I think I backed off my Dolphins a week or two a little bit too early. No, nobody is a, is a killer in, in this division. And yeah, the Dolphins still have plenty of time to get back into this thing. So I think the Jets win 20 to 17. That under, I think, is probably a good bet uh, with these with these two offenses playing the way they are right now. All right, we're going to pick up the pace here. Eddie right. Spaghetti, help us do that. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to fight all your points, kidding. Um, I hate, I <laughs> you know, it's another another chapter in the Blame Aaron Rodgers for Everything book, but we're also forgetting, you know, when Colleen Wolf reported that uh, Robert Sala and Woody Johnson got into a fight and she had to retract that, and then now she could take her victory lap because she clearly was right. Um, you know, there was already rumblings of Sala being on the hot seat when Aaron Rodgers was not playing last year. I will admit, Rodgers definitely had fault for the, the Hackett uh, situation. He is not a good offensive play caller. I think running your whole offense kind of through Garrett Wilson's becoming a problem they desperately need to get Devonte adams in there because al lazard being your number two guy in terms of targets is not what you want i think the big absence of Brees hall lately has also been a major negative that all being said they're going to get a nice little boost here from uh albrick taking over the reins as head coach and i, I think the bills are are severely flawed i think aaron Rodgers, for you know what you want to say about him like he's been playing the position pretty well uh in a year where quarterback play has been pretty down so i, I do think he kind of gets back the team gets back on track i think Brees hall does show up up and the home crowd getting two and a half points uh, or around that, whatever book you're looking at. I, I like the Jets to win this game, uh, at least by, uh, you know, a field goal plus. All right. I would love to spend the next 20 minutes talking about that game, but we're trying to keep the pace here. So let's move along. It's the Browns. It's the Eagles back off the bye. home team, Philly laying nine and a half total on this one is 42 and a half. The note that, I hope you are aware of at this point, five weeks through the NFL season is big dogs, meaning six or bigger dogs are winning at an improbable rate. They're covering. Um, I have the Eagles here 22 to 14. So a little bit uh, of optimism there for the Browns. I will say to uh, offset that. Cleveland team total under 15 and a half that pays out at plus one Oh five. I'm riding with that. I don't know if Jameis is going to get in there. It doesn't sound like they're anxious to do that, to move on from the franchise. I don't know which is it's a catch 22, which is more embarrassing to leave that guy in there and to humiliate yourselves that this is the guy who you gave $230 million to or yank him and have Jameis Winston go in there and prove it once again, like Joe Flacco did a year ago, and remind you, boy, that franchise can't get it out of its own way. They signed Deshaun Watson and backup QBs out there on the waiver wire better than he is. Anyhow, um, like I say, under 15 and a half, A.J. Brown back over 24 and a half uh, reception as his longest uh, catch of the day. I, like I said, I go over there. Hench, I'll see you. Uh, I'm right there in your garage. Uh, I have the Eagles 27, Browns 20. That number's way too big. I mean, the Eagles are not good. That that Eagles team is is profoundly flawed. Obviously, AJ Brown makes them a lot better, but I think the Browns get that. The Browns uh, Browns best drive of every game is the last drive after it's uh, after the game's out of hand. They really convert that touchdown. So I think they get the backdoor cover here. I did see a stat that since the Browns signed him, Deshaun has settled more lawsuits than thrown touchdown passes. I mean, I don't know what Stefanski is doing because, you know, Belichick watched practice and he's like, I watched your blood. So I watched Tom Brady. I think the 199th pick gives us a better chance to win than the number one overall pick. That's my opinion as a football coach. I don't see after what Flacco did in, in replacing Deshaun, What Stefanski, like, have you just been ordered that you cannot bench him under any circumstances? Like, Jameis Winston ain't great, but man, we are seeing quarterback play like it's 1945. I mean, you know, missing Deshaun Watson leads the league in passes you assume were tipped at the line. You're like, oh, well, obviously, (laughs) obviously he didn't miss Amari Cooper that ball had to be deflected. No, that was where he that was his actual attempt to hit a wide open receiver. So the Browns are a mess. It really comes down to the quarterback position. That said, nine and a half, way too much lumber to lay. 
Uh, I think it's uh, Eagles 27-20. Just the tip, mm. Deshaun Watson likes to say. Eddie Spaghetti, how's it Oh, you? man. Uh, yeah, you know, us being in the media, we try to look at stuff through a different lens or try to, you know, read the tea leaves a little bit differently. Seeing Stefanski's response when asked about Deshaun being benched for Jameis, immediately I saw that and I was like, oh, this is coming from the top down. <clears throat> they want no part of swapping out Deshaun Watson for Jameis Winston, which is funny because if, <clears throat> if Jameis Winston was playing, this is a team they probably could have beat, or at least been in the running to beat outright because of how bad the defensive backs are for, for uh, the Eagles. But, Shaq, you mentioned A.J. Brown's coming back. Devontae Smith practiced in full. Lane Johnson practiced in full. Um, getting them back is a huge boost. The Eagles will win this game, but they are not that good to be giving nine, nine and a half. I saw some books, 10 points even. I mean, you can get the Browns plus 10. you got to take that bet every day. So Browns will lose, but Browns will cover. Yeah, those uh, that uh, that magic number, at least so far in 2024 pro football, that plus six, you want to take the dog in that. Um, and here we have another one game of the week. I don't know, in fantasy terms or in personality and rising stars and all that, the Beltway Bowl, Tommy's Ravens, home team, Baltimore laying six and a half total 51 and a half. I'm going to take the Ravens here and go against everything I just said about taking the dog in these situations. 29-21, Baltimore is lighting up the scoreboard. Still think their defense is not very good, especially in passing situations. I still don't think their offensive line is very good. I think the commies are playing very well, though. They are more likely to come back to earth. Mark Andrews looked pretty good, or at least like the best version that we've seen so far this season. I say he continues that trend. Over 23 and a half receiving yards is all you need for a payout there. Brian Robinson has become one of the more dependable touchdown a week bets. Plus 130 is your payout if you follow me there. Hench, how say you? Well, it's crazy that, you know, the Ravens are the, have become the kings of the inexplicable fourth quarter collapse. And the, the Bengals outdid them last week. Like the Bengals out Ravens, the Ravens uh, in that, in that fourth quarter and overtime, obviously uh, Lamar Jackson fumbling two separate perfect snaps. One resulted in a touchdown for the Ravens. The other resulted in the game should be over for the Bengals. Um, and and I knew I knew McPherson was going to miss by by the Bengals play calling. You know, it's Marv Levy, Scott Norwood. Uh, you 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 have to try. It, ever you know if you're if you're if you're counting on a on a 50 plus field goal, you're you, he's going to miss. Uh, obviously, the, the the snap played into that or the hold rather. Um, I think the Ravens are going to are going to play a lot of games like last weekend. Very high scoring. Agree with you about that defense. Thought it would be better. And let's face it, this Jaden Daniels thing ain't a fluke, baby. Like this guy is making the right reads. Uh, he he knows just when to take off with the ball. And, uh, you know, I know he doesn't, he, he apparently rejects the comparison. It's like, why would you reject comparison to the two-time MVP if, uh, if you're Lamar Jackson and waiting and, and who knows, maybe, uh, maybe you actually win championships in addition to MVPs. Uh, I, I, I think the Ravens win by a field goal, but, but Jake hmm. Daniels keeps it close 30, 27. That's uh, the henchman's quarterback in our fantasy league. Yeah. Cool cats. Hot, by the way, real hot with the coolest cat there is, Joe Burrow. He said he had to be perfect against the Ravens for them to win. He was a tick less than perfect with that bad INT down the stretch or else the Bengals win this one. And we're having a different conversation about the Ravens. What we're talking about now is, is that the best team in football? Not with that defense, it ain't. I don't think so. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, Ravens are going to win this one, but again, giving six and a half points to how good the uh, the commies have looked in offense. I am going to take the commies and the points. I think it will be a three or four point loss uh, uh, to Baltimore here. But I mean, outside of obviously like, you know, Mahomes and the Chiefs, just because Mahomes is the great equalizer, I'd be like hard pressed for an offense, like or at least on paper, a roster that I'd rather have more than the Baltimore Ravens right now. I'm not saying they're going to have playoff success, but the way that Derrick Henry's running and the way that, you know, Mark Andrews comes back and, and Lamar spreading the ball, plus Lamar 
Russell has his wheels. Uh, they look phenomenal. But, you know, the other quarterback, there's a reason why this this the point total, I believe, is the second highest of this week. I think only Dallas and Detroit is higher, one point higher. At, uh, it's 51 and a half right now. And Jaden Daniels can score. Sheck, you mentioned Brian Robinson Jr., very underrated. Uh, and it was a great idea then to bring in Austin Eckler to kind of dispel him. And uh, I just think Jaden Daniels, you know, the, the famous clip now of uh, the offseason hard knocks with Brian Dable. Didn't talk about Caleb Williams. He said Jaden Daniels is the guy. That was the guy that Brian Dable wanted. And now he's going to haunt the Giants and the rest of the NFC East for, you know, uh, a decade plus now. So they are a really, really fun team to watch. This is the game of the week that I would be watching. Uh, but again, commies fall short, but they will cover. Look who's back in on Brian Dable. Uh, look at Eddie Spaghetti with a, putting some wins together there. Yeah, he knows probably. quarterbacks. Um, all right, next up, cards at pack. Quick trivia question for you, Hench. When I think of the Cardinals and Packers, I think of the playoff game from what was it, eight or 10 years ago when Rodgers was throwing the Hail Marys and the long uh, plays in overtime to knock them off in the desert. Who was that wide receiver? Tall, lanky, white guy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, Bill Schrader. That's it. That's it. No. Uh, Jeff Janis. It's the Jeff Janis Bowl, Arizona at Green Bay this time. Packers minus five, total 47 and a half. I'm riding with the pack here after a nice little rally to take down the Rams. Packers win it 30 to 24. Kyler over 33 and a half rush yards. Nice win by those Cardinals um up there and by the way Jean-Claude Van Damme attended that game so I was glad he got to see a high-end team and an exciting game um Jaden Reed really turning it on too I say he has over four and a half receptions in this game Hench I'll say you I, I'm, I'm actually surprised how how high this line is I you know I mean obviously I guess people just aren't you know, believe in what their eyes told them last week. I thought the Cardinals played really well against That's your the team. That's how it's starting and, uh, to break through is Hench's so, team. Once again, I'm 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 picking the Cardinals outright hmm. 27 24. I thought that I thought the pack looked pretty uninspired. I know they I know they won it so far, but uh they did not impress me. And and certainly my Dontavian Wicks waiver wire pickup didn't impress me at all. So uh I think not only do the Cardinals keep it close, I think they edge them out. Mm, bold prediction there spaghetti very bold i i almost try to convince myself into taking that but i'm just going to play it safe here and take the cardinals with the points i think the packers probably will win i don't want to back up my preseason prediction of them winning the north and i also did mention that jordan love i thought would be in the mvp conversation i mean he's back now he's healthy he's not playing on you know brazilian soccer turf so if he stays healthy i think they're gonna have a fine season here but totally agree with what hench said this line is a little, it's too much it's five and a half is too much for the cardinals uh the weird thing about the cardinals offense is that marvin harrison jr is leading in target but he's only third in receptions. I, I think you got to fix that, Kyler. You got to got to get the guy the ball in his hands more uh, because I think he is your playmaker. And once he figures that out, they will really soar. Uh, so again, I like the Cardinals taking the points. They will cover, but they they're going to lose. All right, out to Vegas we go. The Pittsburgh Steelers, a renewal of a great AFC-based rivalry in the 70s and beyond. Two of the great brands out there, just like last Sunday night on the banks to the Three Rivers. Two great brands. Not a great game. Didn't end up very well either for the Pittsburgh Steelers against the undermanned Dallas Cowboys. This one I'm calling the Devontae Adams Bowl because one way or the other, I think that the Steelers have Devontae Adams in the overhead compartment on the way back to Pittsburgh. Adams isn't going to play. I understand why that would be a, a, a tough thing to drop him in. Yeah, we traded you. Now put on their uniform and come beat us in, in the Vegas stadium. Obviously, they want to avoid that. I don't understand. I think what's fun, though, about Devontae Adams is I don't know what the Ravens. I mean, I, that's just an ancillary piece at this point. Maybe clouds the passing game more than it helps it if you're them. They already have Zay Flowers. Um, I get it for the Bills, but I do think that Devontae Adams is playing one week from Sunday in Pittsburgh. The question is, is he doing it for the Steelers or for the Jets? I think that's how it comes down. So they may as well just, we'll do you a solid Jets one way or the other. We'll bring Devontae back to Pittsburgh with us, and then we'll settle which hat he puts on for the game when we're playing you. The uh, Raiders are plus three. Aiden O'Connell is their starting quarterback this week. The total is a meager 35 and a half. Steelers play every game this way. I don't know why I ignored it early on. I'm back to it. Pittsburgh, 17-16. I'm going with the George Pickens touchdown. Boy, is that getting to be another mess there. 
that will pay out at plus 225. You know from Tomlin's history that when he has a problem child, he tries to lean in and make that guy shine. I think that is what he will do here with number 14. Whether it's Fields or Russ or Fields and Russ, Hench, how say you? Well, I certainly know Mike Tomlin's recent history, which is on third down, he goes zone. Tolbert gets hurt for the Cowboys to the point that they need to call timeout to get him off the field. They come back out for fourth down. Mike Tomlin calls timeout to give Tolbert another couple minutes of recovery time. So then Tolbert comes back in. The Steelers go man to man and Tolbert scores the, the, the game winning touchdown as the, the Mike Tomlin genius tour sails on like it it's 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 so crazy what a what a mediocre fraud that guy is uh just just always hey he's 10 and 7 he made the playoffs again it's like is that what we're going for like and to to have your team the cowboys ran out their double a farm team defense like missing five guys got they're already undersized their guys are going down during the game Steelers can't move the ball. Okay, Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin just over there. Najee Harris, like he he struggles to gain yards. Like I know he's supposed to be this this freight train. Like he just him he never gets to the second level. There's no burst. There's nothing. Like it it was. So I, I got to interrupt you and say go back and I'm not big on the all twenty two like some are, but really lean in. He is being let down. Justin Fields is being let down. The pass catchers are a liability, obviously, as a collective, but the offensive line ain't doing its job. This, The whole notion was that they were going to be a power football team, and they are just straight up missing blocks like rudimentary crap. So it's it's uh, it's real grim stuff right now, and they got to turn it around immediately well, to have relevance because well, uh, the back caps it, it, like, is a misery. Uh, uh, a, a tenth of a yard after contact for for nine. I hear you. like just like not just going down like oh I, I guess it's second and nine I you know I thought but he vaults guys like, he he, he attempts to vault pro football players yeah. about a half dozen times a game so that's exciting and he just goes down so so and that that performance against that defense was really all and then you know I I forget who who recovered the lateral at the end so maybe they were plus two but for for the real part of the game they were you know plus three in the turnover battle and you lose like that Steelers defense got pushed around up and down the field that the offense. I don't want to hear about it anymore. It Move terrible. on already. Anyway, would you? Uh, so, so it had to be, it had to be pointed out there. All I needed was for them to win that game for a substantial parlay. So I'm furious, but uh, just a terrible effort. But of course they, they, they go way down in class this week against Aiden O'Connell. So uh, I, I, unlike you, I think they win and cover. I think Steelers 20 Raiders 13. I hope you're right. Spaghetti? You know, tough loss for my Steelers to the Cowboys. Uh, really tough showing. You know, Najee Harris, Pat Fryermuth showed up to uh, wherever the Penguins play last night. They had to see that that thrashing. Um, they got to shake the stink off, and they're going to have their so biggest. It was like the, so it's like the Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man, in other words. <laughs> oh, Fryermuth yeah. and Najee, like, we recognize this level of ineptitude. Yeah. Can't do anything. My prediction here is this is the Steelers' biggest margin of victory that we'll have all season long. I think coming to Vegas, we all know the Steelers fans travel well. Sheck, you got to hop on the PJ and get over to uh, Allegiant Stadium here. It's going to be all Steelers, all terrible towels. Aiden O'Connell's walking into a you know a, a trap here. I just feel like it, it's a bad week, a bad defense to make the switch at quarterback. You should have let Minshew run out for one more week there. Um, I, I think with Devontae Adams being out, their only path to victory is just forcing the ball to Brock Bowers and obviously to the Steelers defense the Steelers secondary could easily stop that by doubling up on him Zamir White you have a better chance of uh, getting more yards on the ground with me as running back than Zamir White so I just think this would be a nice easy victory clearly going to cover in this game with the Steelers to get right back on the track and uh, as for the Devontae Adams sweepstakes I would say it makes a ton of sense it would make me feel a lot better about my prediction with the Steelers but I just feel like Woody Johnson firing his coach midseason is going to put up push all his chips in the middle of the table. So that's my only, you know, uh, unfortunate take uh, on that one. Well, those chips already were pushed uh, when they went out and got Aaron Rodgers. And then well, that two guy years said, ago. Well, I need Alan Lazard and also Nate uh, Hackett and all that. Anyway, let's move on. AFC West Chargers back. It feels like we have not seen 
the Chargers in a month or so. That's how it feels to me, at least. They're a mile high. The Broncos are plus three at home. The total, talk about meager, 35 and a half. Chargers team total over 20 and a half, plus 136. I have a hunch coming off the bye. This is when we're going to see Jim Harbaugh's um, philosophy start to really break through. I know the Broncos defense has been very good. J.K. Dobbins, though, gets in the end zone. Plus 135, I say the Chargers go in there, take care of business, 23 to 17. Hench, how say you? Well, you know, as most of us have been casting about to figure out how the Broncos are not terrible. Like, forget competitive, you you should be bad. And then I saw a stat it popped up in in, uh, in their win over the Raiders after, he, after the pick six. Patrick Sertan has covered the number one receiver on the other team 87 times. On those 87 plays, the number one receiver on the other team has seven catches for 75 yards and no touchdowns. So if you have a guy that is just eliminating the guy on your offense, it makes it much easier for the other 10 guys to to play defense against the rest of the offense. Now, the good news for the Chargers is they don't have a number one receiver. So who does who does Sertan even cover? Um and, and and but so I agree with you about Dobbins. I think the Chargers edge them, but uh don't cover. I say Chargers 21-20. I like I say, I'm riding the Harbaugh pedigree. And I think that it's been a minute. And when we saw them, it was Herbert on the bum leg and all of that. He should look better. Spaghetti, how say you? You know, the Broncos are home dogs here. They're getting three points. I, I you want to be, you know, nice and easy. Take that. I think it's a, I think it's a smart bet. I want to take the Broncos in the money line at home. I three straight wins. I mean, beating, you know, going to Tampa, beating the Bucks, holding them to seven points, beating the Jets and East Rutherford, holding them to nine points. I mean, I was texting my friends during that game that are Jets fans. I'm like, you can't lose to a Bo Nix team. I think I'm wrong about that. I think Bo Nix, while his numbers aren't super gaudy, I think, you know, if he just controls the football, doesn't turn it over. Um, um, this is like a stripped down version of what the Steelers are trying to do. I just think in every facet, they're just worse. Justin Fields, obviously better. Najee Harris, I think better. You know, maybe you could argue about the receiving core for Denver, but the the defense is playing uh, phenomenally right now. Um, you know, they, they beat up on the division rival Raiders last week, and I think they're going to get another division win here. The Chargers are just missing that extra, you know, little bit of talent that I think that could, you know, win games. I think Harbo will be fantastic with them, but uh, this is going to be a rough, rough season for the, for the Chargers. So I, I had the Broncos winning outright. I feel like the Lions are officially America's team 2024. They're playing America's alleged team down in Big D. Cowboys plus three at the time of this recording. Total is 52. I say the Lions come out and look good. 34 to 26. Jake Ferguson gets a touchdown. Plus 190 is your payout there. Detroit over 28 and a half. Team points to pay out there is plus 110. Hench, I'll say you. Well, you know, you told me last week that that Najee Harris and Justin Fields would both rush for over 100 yards against the Cowboys. I would have believed it. I didn't. I didn't realize that no one on your offensive line can block, and 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 there there's there's no there is no power. There was no there was no will and strength and force. That is not going to be the case with the Lions. I mean, Montgomery and Gibbs. This is going to be an ass kicking. This this is going to be I like so. the Packers playoff game last year and the Saints regular season game this year where Kamara went nuts. Um, I, I think that I think the Lions blow them out. I think it's 40 to 17. Ooh, bold. I just, I fi figured the standard was I just needed to get it up over the number, but you're actually uh, making a bold prediction there. Spaghetti. Uh, I'm with Inch. I, I think it's going to be a blow in the Lions favor. I think three points is not enough of a spread here. I think this is going to be, you know, Dallas last week probably had their signature victory of the year, uh, their best victory versus a good team. I think it's going to be a, a struggle of a season. I just Dak and that offense is not clicking like they were last year. The defense is not taking the ball away like they were last year. There's a lot of guys who are, who are off the team now. So I just feel like this is uh, probably the end of the road for Mike McCarthy, the end of the season when they won't have playoff success. And I think, it's just the opposite for Detroit. Detroit's ascending, and I think Dan Campbell and uh, and those guys they're going to rattle off a bunch of victories in a row. And I, you know, Dallas, uh, you know, I should be happy about this, but um, but yeah, that's going to be a bad season for the Cowboys. All right, and let's round it up here. I wanted to squeeze this one in because you guys were keen on the Jaguars going into this season. Everybody keen 
on Caleb Williams. This one is the can't miss QB between two QBs who may end up both missing, but one of them is looking good right now, or at least did a week ago. It's the Jags at the Bears. The Bears laying 244 and a half is the total. I say the Bears win at 26 to 23. Jags giving up tons of passing yards and points all season long. The Caleb noise, I am going to ride with it for now against a bum pass defense going up against it. Two touchdown passes for him. Pay out there is plus 110. Hench, I'll say you. This is my favorite game of the week. I think the Mm -hmm. Bears are good and the Jags are bad. So obviously, you know, you get those matchups and a small number, you should jump on it. You know, the Bears, the Bears beat the Titans with defense and special teams. They played the Rams very well, kind of in all phases. And then last week against a bad Panthers team that the offense really came together. Uh, the most alarming thing going into this game, you know, as, as Spaghetti and I were obviously wrong about the, the Jags, but that collapse against the Colts gets spackled over because they get the field goal at the end. But like, oh, God, you guys are up 14 and you're getting beat deep. You know, Flacco is shredding you. Flacco you know? cannot rally a team. A Flacco yeah, like was, team, they can be good, but they bom- cannot rally on you. Like so uh, I, I think I think Caleb Williams cruises in this game. Uh, uh, Bears 24 17 at least they cover very good spaghetti wrap it up for us yeah I mean uh, is I don't know is this a uh, a Jaguars home game now they're playing over in Tottenham that, that always makes things kind of screwy here but I, I do think even though this up and down season for the Bears I, I think the season will end more up than down I think he'll so Caleb will still be going through some growing pains here but you know, he's having growing pains in a rookie year while Trevor Lawrence is having rookie pains. And what is this His fifth, fifth season, whatever it is. Um, it, it's just, yeah, they're a total collapse. Uh, they're my prediction of the Jaguars believing in them was very, very stupid. I thought they had a good roster in place, but uh, I think, you know, outside of the, the offensive line woes that Chicago has, I think is a pretty good squad and they, they will win over in London.